Motor Week is made possible by TireRack.com, Rainex, Hum by Verizon, State Farm, and WeatherTech. The Japanese attack on the European luxury segment is big news this year. Toyota's Lexus is just one Japanese line that's expected to steal a lot of European market share. But many people don't realize that Toyota has had a successful Euro-style sedan called the Cressida for years. The Cressida is still in the Toyota line, and in 89, it's better and more European than ever. The Cressida is Toyota's most successful luxury nameplate. It debuted in 1979 and has spent the last 10 years quietly building a loyal following of drivers who wouldn't buy anything else. The reason for the Cressida's low profile may lie in its styling. While the European cars that it emulates have their own distinctive aerodynamic signatures, the Cressida has retained a dignified but unexciting look that fails to distinguish it from other large sedans. Even this year's larger, more aerodynamic car doesn't exactly leap out of the luxury car pack. Even for those who favor function over form, the $21,498 Cressida could be much more appealing than a more expensive Mercedes. Even with full options, our test car came in at $23,143. But the Cressida's true character lies under its skin. This year it starts with a new 3-liter 24-valve inline six-cylinder engine. This slightly detuned power plant, transplanted from the Supra Sports Coupe, is still capable of an impressive 190 horsepower. This allows the heavy rear-drive Cressida to sprint from 0 to 60 in only 8.8 .8 seconds. The quarter mile ends in 16.7 seconds at a terminal speed of 84 miles per hour. Power delivery is smooth, with the most grunt concentrated in the engine's mid-range. This makes the Cressida slow off the line, but not for long. The four-speed electronically controlled automatic gearbox is sluggish but smooth. Shift points can be set in either power or economy modes, though we found little difference between them. Suspension is by McPherson struts in the front and Supra-inspired double wishbones in the rear. This allows the Cressida a level of handling that we don't often find in large Japanese sedans. Heavy initial front plow gives way to a gradual rear-end drift, allowing you to easily point the car into hard corners. Steering is quick with plenty of feedback, though the car's slow reactions and substantial tire scrub leave it out of the hardcore sports sedan lead. Emergency maneuvers are met with slowed down steering and a substantial increase in body roll. Grip, however, remains solid. The Cressida has power-assisted disc on all four wheels. Anti-lock brakes are optional. Our car's standard brakes brought the Cressida down from 60 miles per hour with a distance average of only 115 feet. Arrow straight stops are the norm, even without ABS. The rear will lock if you lean on the pedal too hard, but excellent pedal feel makes this easy to avoid. The Cressida's interior reflects the Cressida's luxury car status. Room is plentiful, and the plush accommodations give it an almost living room-like ambience. But there are some contradictions here. The sweeping Supra-like dash looks more suited to a sports car than a Luxo boat. The gauges lean back to the luxury car side, however. There is a tachometer, but no oil pressure or voltage gauges. Plush bucket seats further the living room effect. The optional seven-way power driver's seat and standard telescoping steering wheel accommodate any size driver. Dash controls follow the bigger is better school of thought. Large, well-marked buttons and switches abound. The stereo has a satellite switch panel that keeps the most frequently used controls within easy driver reach. Some MotorWeek staffers thought it redundant, but it does keep your eyes closer to the road. An AM-FM cassette is standard with a compact disc player available as an option. The automatic climate controls also lean a bit to the gimmicky side with their slide-out panel of fan speed and vent switches. A more practical dash feature is a slide-out cup holder to keep your coffee steady during that morning dash to the office. Rear seat room is expected in a big luxury car, but the Cressida doesn't deliver all ways. Head and shoulder room are good, but leg and foot room are tight. That's the price paid for retaining a rear-drive layout. 
The same goes for the shallow trunk with its high liftover. Our compliments on a full-size spare, however. The EPA rates the Cressida at 19 City 24 Highway. Our mixed test loop returned 19 miles per gallon. Interior sound measured a low 66 decibels. On our safety check, the Cressida makes a clean sweep with front passive restraints, rear shoulder belts, and optional anti-lock brakes. It's the standard disc brakes, however, that lead our list of hits. That's followed by the Cressida's reasonable luxury car price, sophisticated interior design, excellent acceleration, and smooth, predictable handling. Misses are the bland styling, limited rear seat room, and small trunk, the latter two due to a bulky rear-wheel drivetrain. By comparison, the Cadillac Sedan DeVille costs more. It offers more passenger and cargo space, but lacks the Cressida sporty handling. The Audi 100 is also more expensive, but it offers better passenger and cargo space and beats the Cressida in handling. So despite the wonders of Japanese technology, U.S. and German luxury cars still have what it takes to hold their own. Yet it's to the Cressida's credit that it's survived for so long in such a competitive market segment. And that's without the benefit of a fancy image and splashy marketing campaign. This solid dependence on sensible design may keep the Cressida around for a long time to come. Maybe long after some other Japanese-come-lately luxury cars have come and gone.